Welcome to this lesson on closing the sale. This is without doubt the most important step in the sales process, and one which many salespeople find the most challenging. This presentation will introduce a range of techniques to use in closing a sale successfully. So, let's get started on developing your closing skills. You have worked hard to get your foot in the door. Then on telling customers what your products can do for them, and then on responding to any objections they might have. Now it's time to seal the deal. A good salesperson needs to know when it's time to close, and how to go about doing it. In this unit, we will look at Understanding the closing process Some key closing principles And some powerful closing techniques Closing is that part of the sales process where we ask the buyer for a decision. Closing is when the buyer reaches the point where a decision can be made. Typically, the buyer has three choices. Choice 1, to buy from you. Choice 2, to buy from somebody else. And choice 3, not to buy at all. The most important principles to bear in mind when looking at closing the sale include, closing the sale is an integral part of the sales process. No salesperson ever closed every sale. Selling is a numbers game. Certain key ratios apply to your sales activity. The right time to close is when the customer is ready to buy. Look for more than one opportunity to close the sale. Buyer resistance is natural and should be expected. And buyers seldom ask you for the order. Let's look at each of these in turn. The first point about closing is that closing is part of the sales process. This means that closing techniques in themselves are not enough to ensure success, if the other parts of the sales process have been neglected. Before a buyer will place an order with you, he or she will have to see a need for your product, and be convinced that your particular product represents the best solution to the problem represented by that need. The second point about closing is that no salesperson ever closed every sale. Everyone who has ever sold professionally has had to get used to living with rejection. A good salesperson will always be rejected more times than he or she is successful. In fact if this is not the case the salesperson probably isn't trying hard enough. And the secret is to learn to live with rejection. Every time you fail, you move closer to the time you will succeed. The third point to consider about closing is that selling is a numbers game. Given a basic level of skill in sales techniques, the amount you sell is directly related to the number of calls you make. The more customers you see, therefore, the more business you will close. However, you need to be seeing the right people with the authority and the resources to buy. You also need to be talking to people who will have influence over the final decision, even if they are not decision makers themselves. By measuring your sales performance over a period of time, you will understand more fully the key ratios that apply to your business. Examples of these could be Appointments booked to number of telephone calls made The number of successfully closed calls to the number of cold calls made The number of successfully closed calls to the number of inquiry calls made Or, the number of successfully closed calls to the number of presentations made etc. in sales These ratios vary depending on the industry, the products and how the products are sold the key learning point here is that these ratios will tend not to change much over time and can be used in planning personal and team activity in order to exceed sales targets. By being aware of the relative likely success of different kinds of activity, you will be able to plan your time more effectively by spending the maximum amount of time on your potentially most productive sales activities. The fifth point to bear in mind about closing, which might seem obvious, is that the right time to close is when the customer is ready to buy. Closing tends to happen towards the end of the sales call or meeting, but don't assume this will always be the case. If the customer wants to buy early into your sales presentation, then you should get commitment straight away. There may be more information you need to give, however, having gained commitment the customer will be more relaxed, and less likely to raise objections at a later stage. So watch out for signs of commitment to buy. The fifth point to consider is to look for more than one opportunity to close the sale. There may be several occasions during the sale when the customer is ready to buy. There will therefore be more than one opportunity for you to close the sale. Just because the customer says no now, it doesn't mean it won't be yes in 10 minutes time. No can mean various things, for example. Not on the terms you describe. Not at the moment. Not in your time scale. Not at that price or convince me further. 
or finally, I'm getting interested but I need more information. The seventh point for you as the salesperson, is that buyer resistance is natural and should be expected. During the sales process, the buyer is under as much pressure as the salesperson. The buyer is often thinking about the consequences of agreeing to your proposal. The buyer may be thinking, does this represent value for money? What will my director think? Are they as reliable as she says they are? He says they can achieve significant growth. Is that true? Is her product better than her competitors? Or, can I afford the monthly payments? A really important point to bear in mind is that buyers seldom ask you for the order. Most buyers rely on the salesperson to make the buying process easy for them. Buyers rarely ask for the order outright. It is a fact, however, that around 70% of sales calls end with the salesperson failing to ask for the order. This is due to the salesperson's fear of rejection. We will look next at ways of overcoming this problem. Time now to look at some powerful closing techniques, including asking for the order, the assumptive close, the alternative close, closing on a small issue, the pressure close, converting on objections, the trial close, and the balance sheet close. Let's look now at each of these. So, first, remember to ask for the order. Remember, only 3 out of 10 people actually ask for the order. Of the 3 salespeople who do ask for the order, 2 give up after the second refusal. Having presented to your customer in a professional way, you have the right to ask for the order, and the customer expects you to do so. This technique alone will improve your sales results and give you more confidence in the selling situation. Remember that closing is about timing. The best closeness recognize, there is a time to ask for commitment, and they have the confidence to do so. If you get rejected, so what? What have you actually lost? In fact you are better off, because even if you get rejected at least you now know where you stand. The next closing technique is the assumptive close. By assuming that the order is being placed, you can remove the responsibility for decision making away from the buyer. The assumptive close uses words like, will, and, when. For example, this will solve a lot of problems when it is installed. When will be the best time to deliver? Will four units be sufficient to meet your requirements? Another popular closing approach is the alternative close. This close gives the buyer the choice between two alternatives, both of which have been chosen by you. Do you require delivery Tuesday, or will next week be more convenient? Will you take the option of alloy wheels or do you prefer central locking? Would you prefer the green or the red? You may also want to close on a small issue. Often the buyer finds it easier to make small decisions than large ones. However, having made the smaller decision, the larger one becomes easier to make. Choose a minor feature of your products and gain agreement from the buyer on that feature. Delivery can be made on a weekly basis. Does that meet your requirements? We can arrange for the colors to match your company logo. Would that be what you are looking for? If storage is a problem we can arrange for a split delivery at no extra cost. How does that sound? One of the most popular types of close is the pressure close. This enables you to put pressure on the buyer in terms of special offers, or inducements that are available or penalties for not placing the order. This price is only available up until the end of the month. If you order the smaller quantity the higher price will apply. We are giving a free mobile phone with orders of 500 units and above. This offer ends tomorrow. It is also possible to convert on objections. An objection can be a very strong buying signal. If the buyer raises an objection, and it is the only objection that is preventing the order from being placed, you can use this to gain commitment to buy. For example, you have said Mr. Jones that you are interested in our products, but the discount terms that we offer are unacceptable. Is this the only objection you have? If we were able to work out a compromise, would you be willing to place the order today? Standard negotiating techniques are also very useful at the closing stages of the sales process. For example, if I can reduce my price by 15 per unit will you agree to place the order today? If I can agree your delivery terms can we agree today on a long-term commitment for you to use us as your main supplier? Or, I will ring my boss now. If he agrees to reduce the price by 10% do we have a deal? Another closing technique is known as the trial close. 
During your presentation, the buyer may make a remark that suggests a decision to buy may have been made. This means that he or she may be ready to commit. You should seek to close immediately by asking trial closing statements like the following to probe for a close. How does that sound to you? Will that work for your situation? If I could do that for you, would you purchase the product? If I can fix that problem for you would you be interested? Does this fit into your budget? Or, how about I do this for you? A final closing option is the balance sheet close. One closing technique that can be used is a comparison between your offer and that of a competitor. To do this, draw a vertical line down the middle of a sheet of paper. Write down all the points in your favor on the left-hand side, and those of the competition on the other side. Be sure to illustrate just how much better you are. Finally, you should also be ready to sweeten the deal, with reference to many of the earlier mentioned closing techniques. If there is room for maneuver on payment terms, this may persuade the customer that they are getting a good deal. If you can give them a discount on peripheral equipment to increase the benefits of the item they are interested in, this may also work. If you have conducted the previous steps well enough, a closed step is just a formality. If you've done a fantastic job, the customer may even move to the close himself. But there will be times when you need to move to an actual closing phase. Don't be afraid to ask for the close, but do so without any tricks or tools. Use the closing techniques provided here to make your close a winner. There are a number of activities to complete for this unit. Take the time to complete these in your manual. In this way, you will better learn from and retain the knowledge covered in this unit. Many thanks for watching this lesson. Want to learn more? Click on our website to view our range of courses on marketing and sales management.